I wanna show you my take on one of the most classic and beloved salads of all time, the Caesar salad. Stick around and I'll share five essential tips that will elevate your Caesar salad from good to unforgettable. Whether you're looking to impress your guests or just treat yourself to a restaurant quality salad at home, these tips are for you. For the full ingredient list, check the description box below, but enough talking, let's get cooking. The first step is to make your own croutons. I mean, you can buy croutons at the store, but it's just seasoned bread that's baked. So everybody's got bread in their house. So I'm just gonna take this white bread and turn it into delicious and crispy croutons with very little effort. So this is uh, Dave's Killer Bread. At our home, we call this the prison bread because if you read the story on it, the guy who went to prison now operates the most successful bread company in the world. Prison bread. So when you're cutting your bread, make sure that you're using a bread knife and not like your chef's knife. The chef knife mushes the bread. So bread knives, the whole reason they exist is so they can cut without mushing the bread. And so how I like to do it is uh, first I'll cut it in half and I just have all three all stacked up and then I'll cut each half in half again. And then I'll just take each one and cut it into three pieces and they'll make nice, even-shaped, basically square croutons. And day-old bread works best, but maybe your bread's not that old and you could just use fresh bread, it's totally fine. So now I'll take the bread and I'll put it inside this bowl. And we only need three things to season these croutons. So first we're gonna toss them with a little bit of olive oil, just so none of the pieces soak up too much. What I'm gonna do is toss the bowl while I'm drizzling the olive oil on top and uh, just a tablespoon or two, doesn't need a lot. Next, we're gonna go in with some of my base seasoning. This is a blend of garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper. And now a sprinkle of some dried Italian seasoning. And now I'll just get in there with my hands and evenly coat all of the croutons. And you could add whatever spice blends you like. Croutons could be any flavor. This is just like a garlic herb crouton, I guess. Okay. Now we're gonna spread these out on my baking tray. And I got this lined with aluminum foil and parchment paper for easy cleanup. And we're gonna spread them out, making sure there's a lot of nice room in between each one. So once these are spread out, I'm just gonna hit them right over the top with a little bit of spray oil, just to see if there's any dry spots. Those will burn, oil stops things from burning little light spray over the top. And now these are gonna go in a 350 degree oven for about 10 or 15 minutes. I also have the convection setting on. It just blows the air around and makes everything nice and evenly crispy. My next tip is to make your own dressing and to make it inside of a jar with an immersion blender. Making Caesar dressing is so easy. And when you do it like this, you don't even have to transfer the container. The container we make it in is the container we're gonna store it in. And you could make this in a regular blender, but the immersion blender just makes a cleanup so easy. You just gotta clean this one little thing. And if you don't have an immersion blender, get one. It's one of the cheapest and most useful tools that you could have in the kitchen. So the first ingredient we're gonna add in here is some egg yolks. So let me show you how to separate the yolks from the whites. The first step is to get a nice even crack on the egg. Make sure that you're not gonna crack against something. I like to crack my eggs nice and flat. And once we get a line going right across, we're going to open up the egg and let the yolk sit on one side of the shell. We're just trying to catch the yolk on the other side. And as you're doing that, the white is going into the container below. I think this is an essential cooking skill that everybody's gotta get down at some point. So once you've gotten most of the white into the container and just the yolk here. We're gonna dump that right into here. And I never throw out any of the whites. These I'll use for breakfast and I'll just add some protein to my eggs. 
Next up, we're gonna put in two cloves of a garlic. This is probably one of the only times that I'm using restraint with garlic. Normally I double, triple, quadruple the amount of garlic. Here I find that two fresh cloves is enough. When you're using fresh garlic, sometimes it can get a little spicy uh, just to uh, does the job of adding the garlic flavor without it completely overpowering the dressing. To help out the immersion blender, we're just gonna clip off the woody end of the root of the garlic. And then from there, I'm just gonna chop them into little pieces. You know, once we blend it, all those pieces will be completely gone, but we're gonna help the immersion blender out by chopping these up a little bit. Always help your blenders out by chopping stuff, even if a little bit, it always helps. And now this ingredient brings me to my next tip, leave in the anchovies. Everybody gets a little spooked or grossed out by I don't like anchovies, so I'm gonna leave them out of the dressing. I see a lot of recipes that use different things instead of the anchovies. Just use the anchovies. They're cheap, they're easy, they're delicious, and they're what makes Caesar dressing Caesar dressing. It's the anchovies. So here I got some canned anchovy fillets. And usually about the anchovy fillets this size, about four is good. And I like to leave them inside the oil because uh, I'll keep these in the fridge and then reuse them. So we'll just pull them out with a fork and we're gonna put four of them inside the jar to get blended. So there's four. And I don't understand why people don't like anchovies. Maybe it's the look at them, but these things are so delicious. I love eating them just like this. They're just unbelievable umami flavor. That is so good. And my favorite thing to put on top of pizza. The juice from one lemon. And maybe you don't have fresh lemons. You could use a vinegar in a pinch, but lemon juice really makes this one. And we're also gonna put in about two tablespoons of this Worcester sauce. That's the pronunciation I got from my uh, British friends in the comments section. I don't think I'll ever try to say the whole thing. Nobody really needs to. So now let's get our immersion blender in there. We're just gonna stick this in a jar and start to blend this on a low speed. So now we're gonna take some olive oil and drizzle it in and emulsify everything together. Here I'm just using a, a nice extra virgin olive oil. I kind of use this universally for almost everything in the kitchen, just like a good Italian does. A lot of times you see on Caesar dressings, I'm using like canola oil or vegetable oil, not in my dressings. So I'm gonna measure out about three quarters of a cup of this olive oil. Our croutons are done. Let me show you those. We're gonna set those aside and let those cool. Take a look at these croutons. I mean, the color on them is perfect. The smell in here is unbelievable. You can see it's got that nice golden brown delicious color on it. And I don't think colors can be delicious, but if you cook enough, you know what delicious colors look like. So let's set these aside and let's finish up our dressing. So with the blender running on low and just add the oil a little bit at a time so it emulsifies really nicely, gets a nice creamy texture. Lastly, we're gonna add a half a cup of some grated Parmesan cheese. Here I'm using the pre-shredded stuff. A tiny little pinch of salt. A lot of the stuff that we put in here already has salt in it, so it doesn't need much. And some fresh ground black pepper. And now last time with the blender, let's see if I can do this without making a mess. So once our dressing is all mixed up, we just gotta detach this end of the immersion blender. And this is the only thing that we gotta wash. We don't have to clean out a blender and dump it into something else. It's already in the jar, we're good to go. 
So now tip number four is to use the right kind of lettuce. You do not have to use a romaine lettuce. You can use other types of lettuce, but the quality of the lettuce is very important. Here I'm using, I think this is like a, like a gem lettuce that you would call this, or like a baby leaf, uh, green leaf lettuce. But let me show you the quality of what we are looking for in a Caesar salad lettuce. So the lettuce has to have some durability to it. It's got to be a little crunchy. It's got to have nice folds and it can't be too soft. You also want it to be a mild lettuce. I probably wouldn't use arugula or something like that. That's got a really strong flavor. This is a really mild lettuce. You can see it's got a lot of nice nooks and crannies for the dressing to hide, but as it's coated with the dressing, it's durable enough that it'll hold up to that heavier, uh, creamier, thicker Caesar dressing. And my last tip for making an amazing Caesar salad is to dress the lettuce directly and and then plate it. Uh, don't just put a bunch of lettuce in a bowl and pour the dressing on top. The dressing is just gonna sit there and it's just not gonna coat it like a Caesar dressing should. So we're gonna take a couple of spoonfuls of this dressing. And before I do, let me show you how creamy this dressing looks. I mean, see how it clings to the spoon and it runs in a nice stream. It's not too liquidy. This is the consistency that you're looking for. If you put this in the fridge, it'll even thicken up a little bit, but uh, this is a really a nice consistency for this amazing creamy dressing. So we'll take a couple of spoonfuls of that and we'll put it right on the bottom of the bowl. We'll put our lettuce right on top of the dressing and now another spoonful right on the top. And you can use your hand or you can even just use the spoon that you used, but we'll toss the lettuce inside the bowl with the dressing until it's nice and well coated. When you do this with thin lettuce leaves, maybe like a spring mix or something like that, it'll just get really soggy and you'll watch like these little flimsy leaves flatten out. But you can see even once we have this dressing coating the, the, the salad, it hasn't really sunk down too much. So now to plate, we'll take our dressed lettuce leaves and we'll put them inside of our salad bowl. This smells so good, I'm so excited to eat this. Now we'll take some of those croutons, put them right on top. And here's my last and sixth bonus tip. I think you should shred the Parmesan cheese on top and not shave it. I don't really like when it's shaved because I think they're really hard to get on the fork, but when you shave the Parmesan cheese on top, you get a really nice even coating of the Parmesan cheese in every single bite. Now, this salad is good to go and absolutely delicious. I can't wait to try it and it came together in minutes. So now let's get a little bit of all of this on one bite. These crispy croutons, this beautifully dressed lettuce. I mean, Caesar salad is the salad that even people who don't like salad like. I am super excited for this bite. A little bit of croutons, the, the dressing, cheese, the lettuce. So simple, so delicious. Well, let's see. That's unreal good. Some of the best restaurants, they make the salad dressing right at the side of the table. And it's a little table theatrics, but the dressing is super fresh. It didn't come from, it ain't Ken's. <laughs> and uh, this is so good and it's so simple. And I had everything that I need to make this dressing on hand all the time. Now, this is just an unbelievably delicious bite. It also shows how amazing simple food can be. And this is a $20 salad at a steakhouse. Mmm, that is so good. I'm a proponent of shredding the cheese just like I did and not shaving it into those big chunks. You get so much more of it in every single bite. For the dressing, I'll just put the lid on. They got these nice screw top lids. This is gonna go right on top and this is gonna go into the refrigerator and we'll eat this over the next couple of days. This should last for about a week, but it never actually lasts that long because we always go through it. I'll put this stuff on wraps, it's super delicious. I'm gonna finish the rest of this salad while I'm doing that. Check out my two other favorite homemade salad dressings. They are absolutely amazing. I know you're gonna love them and I'll see you there. Thanks.